Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Wyckoff class. Now, I won't get any further into those, you know, sexual innuendo Wyckoff jokes, so let's get right into distribution. So the topic of today's class is distribution. I know that as Ruben points in his book here, we have reaccumulation first before we learn distribution, but I thought it would be best to understand first accumulation, then distribution, and then understand in a single class reaccumulation and redistribution, okay? So what is a distribution? So essentially what a distribution is, is when uh, the large players in a the market, they stop an upwards trend to start distributing their asset for as much money as they can and keeping it in as tight of a range as they can while shaking out as many people as they can. Okay, I know this is, you know, a lot to process, but we will try to get into it. So first... In the context of the law of cause and effect that we learned about just a couple of classes ago, we know that, you know, if they were to just dump it all, uh, you know, in a single movement, just sell it all, you know, in a sell order, the price would immediately basically go to zero, right? It would just dump down, kind of like what went down with Luna, right? And they do not want that. They want to realize as much profit as they can. So what they do is they try to create this narrative that the asset is going to go to the moon and it's going to go up forever. And while they are you know, saying that what they are doing is, you know, selling the assets, selling as much as they can. All right. And this is the core idea of cause and effect in distributions. They are creating the narrative that this is the best, best asset in the world. And as we saw in 2021, that Bitcoin was going to go to 200k, 300k and whatever. And that, uh, you know, you should buy it now because it's only going to be more expensive in the future. And then while they are saying that, they are just selling their asset to the people that believe what they are saying. Okay, so they develop and they carry this plan that just absorbs all available market demand. You know, they sell to all, all of the demand that is in the market at the highest po price possible. Okay, so they have many handling maneuvers. So they are supporting, they are supported by media and the media eventually reflects on YouTubers and that reflects on the audience because the audience doesn't pay attention in general to someone that says something that they don't like. And it's, a, it's you know, a, a, just a, an infinite feedback loop, right? Because you know that something cannot go up forever and yet you believe it because you're still making money, right? Because people uh, believe in everything that you tell them as long as they are making money, basically, right? Um, and in the context of counterparty and liquidity, they are, of course, going after people's stop losses, right? I mean, you can call this a conspiracy theory or whatever, but if I, as just a regular 20-year-old guy, Okay, I'm just a regular guy and I have access to it as we saw in the last class. I have access to the liquidation prices of everyone. So if I have access to that, wouldn't the large traders have like an algorithm or at least have a more sophisticated way of seeing that than I do? I think they would. I think it's basically a fact, right? And they obviously try to maneuver that in their favor, try to maneuver that to get as much bang for the, their buck as they can. And we can see that very, very clearly here. So in this context here, this was, you know, the period of uh, distribution in 2021. And we saw just a bunch of liquidations during this range. So just this day alone, it was over a billion dollars in longs liquidated that just poof, vanished out of traders' hands, right? And we had a few spikes here and there. And these amounts, they are still unmatched until today. Like, we don't even come close to what was happening here. So we had a huge amount of greed and just choppiness in the market to liquidate as many people as they can, to hunt as many stop losses as they can, just so that they can get the most liquidity for the trade, so that they can... Uh, 
absorb as much of the market's demand for their selling, okay? Uh, the price is also following the path of least, least resistance, okay? So they try to, you know, just carry these tests, right? You have a range, so we can define this range kind of like this. I would say you can define this range of distribution here and it's always coming back down and going back up, coming up, back down, up, back down, up, back down. And that is to shake off as many traders as they can to absorb as much of that demand as they can. And, you know, take into consideration that it doesn't necessarily have to follow the schematics that we saw earlier in the course, like here. It doesn't necessarily have to follow this um, schematic that we saw here with just one test. It can have like multiple, multiple tests, right? It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to happen just once, and it can happen many, many times. And they will do as many times as they can to shake off every single one that every single trader that they can. Okay, so uh, that is the core principle. Just testing and testing the market, seeing if, oh, oh we'll, we'll buy a little bit higher, we'll sell a little bit higher, what, what what are you going to do? I need to shake you out, I need to, you know, just absorb your demands, okay? Uh, finally, uh, what we can see is a few common characteristics in distribution ranges. Of course, these are not always true, This these are not, you know, dogmas, you have to take, you know, everything into consideration, the market conditions and whatnot. But they do give us, you know, a little bit of a, a higher, you know, assertivity in our thoughts. So first, we have high volume and high volatility during the range development. And this can be very easily seen if we look at the moving average of volume here. So in case you didn't know, TradingView automatically plots a moving average of the volume for you if you enable it in the settings. And what you'll see is that basically the, the average volume that we had in, for example, March 5 is essentially unmatched until today, right? The average volume that we had in this range is essentially unmatched until today. What we consider now a high volume day is basically what was an average volume day back then, okay? Second, um, we have many tests to the lower zone of this range and they happen without many volume, which indicates that there is little to no buy an interest. So we can see it very, very clearly here. For example, when you go down here, we have diminished volume, right? When you go down here, once again, diminished volume. When you go down here, once again, diminished volume. And that is basically what happens. And that really clearly, clearly indicates that there is an absence of buying interest. Because if there was any buying interest, they would, you know, just buy the dips, right? They would actually buy the dips and we would see a high volume in th these candles. But that simply does not happen, right? Because there is no buy interest. Actually, these, these movements are caused by the large traders, you know, distributing their stocks. Uh, third, there are many upward shakes to previous highs. So, you know, it's either in, you know, at you know, at the line, as we saw in the schematics, just right at the line or just barely higher. You know, we had the first high here of 58K, 300, then 62K, I think, and then finally 64, 900. So it's just a tiny bit higher to give people the, the hopium, you know, and that is purposeful purposefully created to go hand in hand with the narrative that they are creating okay they want to give people hope that is going to go to the moon when actually they are simply distributing all right finally uh, there are wider and more fluid movements uh, when we are going down than up movements uh, when we're when we are going up and what that means is that usually when we go up we see you know just a, a jagged movement right we have a jagged movement. And when we go down, it's just straight down, right? And this is a clear example that we can see here. 
Uh, and finally, the last one, which again, as I said, it's not necessary to see all these characteristics, but we usually see a development of lower highs and lower lows. Now, of course, the, this didn't exactly play out here, but it's something to keep into consideration that not every pattern plays out exactly as we see in a textbook, right? This is the real world and this is the real life. Uh, and by the end of it, we see the beginning of a bearish movement. So when there is no longer any demand for the asset, then a turning point takes place and it just, you know, we have a sharp downward movement. So we have, for example, this candle here where we went down 12% in a single day. And then we have a very sharp movement down and then we eventually hit the, you know, accumulation phases and whatnot. So if you take just three things from this video, I think you guys should take that first. Uh, the distribution is a range created when they stop an upwards trend and they use that stop to distribute it, that their stock, you know, using the, all the narratives that they have created. And by they, I mean, you know, the large traders, the institutional traders. Secondly, take into consideration all these, you know, characteristics that we have seen here. So don't take them as dogma, but do take them into consideration when you are analyzing them. And third, you know, just see, just understand that all that this is doing is absorbing the demand. And once the demand is gone, then we have a sharp downward trend. Okay. So that was about it. Uh, if you want to sign up uh, for the Crypto Garden and join me with a lot more content, exclusive content, spreadsheets and whatnot, you can join at thecryptogarden.io. And yeah, I think that was about it. And goodbye.